Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Raya Salter. And I'm Elise Anderson. In our show this week, we'll cover the Honolulu Bike Symposium presented at the Laniakea Downtown YWCA. It was the culmination of three months of public outreach to get input for the design and implementation of improvements for the Complete Streets program. Mayor Caldwell was there with many city officials and representatives of the biking community. They talked about the planned improvements designed and intended to make downtown a safer and more appealing place to walk, bike, and drive, including widened sidewalks and improved bike lanes. Hi, we are at the City of Honolulu's Downtown Chinatown Complete Streets Initiative Public Information Event. This is a big event down here at the YWCA that is a culmination of a three-month outreach initiative that the city has been making to residents to find out and get their opinions on how can Downtown Chinatown be more walkable, more livable, and more equitable. Let's go check out the presentations and events. The room you're in right now is Fuller Hall, and this is where we're having our symposium. And the focus of the content in this room is the Downtown Chinatown Complete Streets Implementation Project. And it's been going on for the last several months. Many of you have probably been to one or more of our events, so it's great to see your faces again and to see lots of new people. Putting a protected bike lane on King Street was more controversial for me than rail. I got more hate mail, and still do, about the bike lane. Because people don't like change, and you in this room are promoting change. And Complete Streets is about being different. Our country, after the Industrial Revolution, was based on a car economy. And we built our cities all over America based on cars. But we forgot about the people. Pe people love, though, to drive and do things in the old way, and we're trying to change it. You know, in the council in 2012, passed the Complete Streets Ordinance. I wasn't mayor then, but I believe in following the ordinances that are passed, and I believe the direction the council set was correct. But instead of just wah, just talk about it, we need to walk it and ride it and build it. And for me, I think a prime example is the city of Copenhagen. You know, back in the 60s and 70s, it was a car-driven city. Small streets, lots of cars. And through efforts of the mayors of that city and the community, they started building protected bike lanes. And today, over 50% of the commutes for work and school are by bike. Talk about the King Street bike lane. Do you know now, we started it, right, in December of 2015. We now have over 1,000 riders in a 24-hour period. It continues to go up. I said it was 400, then it was 700. Now it's 1,000, unless Mike Packard is making up these numbers. Are you making up these numbers, Mike? But I have to say, you know, I live in Manoa, so I go down King Street, take a left at Punahou. And during the afternoon rush hour, those bikers are going by me faster than I'm driving. But it's music to my heart. And they're clustered, right? You get groups of them because they're hitting the lights and stopping and moving on. But people, and I'm going, wow! This is looking really cool, and we need to continue. So, you know, in January, we now did a, a bike lane on McCulley, took away some parking lots. Of course, the press just talked on and on about parking being removed, but didn't talk about all the people riding already, and there's lots of people riding. And I went for a jog yesterday at 3.30. That's where I got my great tan of today. Went from red to less red. But... The bike lane, protected, is being put on South Street right now. Yes. The white lanes are there. We're going to put the bollards. And we're going to have a protected bike lane on South Street. And just today, Robert Croning, you see him over there, the guy that kind of looks like me but with more hair, much better looking. He's a director of design and construction. We met. We talked about places like Bishop Street taking King Street down in front of the Holly, all the way down to Bethel, so you got a connection with downtown and King Street. I mean, B Bishop, another Malcolm Mackay. And we're looking at Ward, we're looking at other streets. So we really have this grid. And why is that? I'm willing to take the hits. We need to get as many lanes out there by 2020. 
have a very vigorous and robust system because I believe you guys will ride and many more will ride. And that will encourage whoever is the mayor after me to continue to build this system in the urban core and in other places around this island too. But we need to get it done and so we're working, we're planning, we have public outreach, we're talking about design in these communities, some of the places I just re represented. And for me, I ask, and I told Robert this, we don't need to build the Rolls Royce immediately. We just need to put a protected lane so people ride. We can always come back later and put a more beautiful divider or bulb outs. We should do all of those things. But you don't want to get the perfect in the way of the good. And for me, it's doing the good because once you lay that anchor, I think the rest will follow and we will have a robust network. The complete streets and this, this need for complete streets started in 2009 with a state legislation requiring the counties to adopt the complete streets policy. With 2012, the ordinance made it law that in all aspects of planning, design, construction, maintenance, all aspects of roadway work, we, we considered the needs and uses for, for all types of people. And, and whether you chose to walk or chose to bike or take transit or drive, that we made sure that we made it as safe as we could for you to get where you needed to go. And when we looked at that, we made sure that there was an equitable use of, of these facilities. 2013, the Complete Streets Implementation Study, and at the same time, the AARP and the city uh, collaborated for the Age-Friendly City Initiative. Um, I hope you've gotten a chance to meet with them outside. They, they are a lot of the effort going into ensuring that our Keiki and our Kapuna are taken care of to make sure that the, the most vulnerable users of our roads are, are accounted for and that they can get where they need to go safely. The state at the same time did their pedestrian master plan, which accounted for the state facilities and how people got where they needed to go. Not but last year, the Complete Streets Design Manual, which, which Wes talked about, was finalized. That was a three-year effort, which took a 1976 Traffic Standards Manual. Now, the last time that the Traffic Standards Manual had been updated, and it brought it up to 2016. Best practices so we can take Honolulu in that forward direction to make it uh, the great city that it deserves to be. At that time, I, I came on to the city after working 15 years in the private industry and um, with the exciting opportunity of helping to lead us in that direction. And, and that's where I am with you today. You know, the reality is that, that urban Honolulu and Honolulu in general is changing with rail coming and transit-oriented development, the increased density that we have in our areas is just going to necessitate the way that we move and travel throughout our islands and travel in our core area. You know, we have a very thriving downtown that needs to acknowledge the fact that the car center design that we might have built it out to be is not the future of where we are going. You know, bike share and the new Bicky bike that I hope you've gotten a chance to sit on, you know, bike share is coming. That's a hundred bike share stations with a thousand bikes between Between our Chinatown and our, and our Diamond Head area, that's a huge stretch of bikes and opportunities for people to make the choice. Give them that opportunity to choose to bike, whether that's trying it out for the first time or as regular users getting to where they need to go without feeling the need to drive. And you know, with that, we need to make sure that the infrastructure reflects those needs and people feel safe to get on those bikes and ride to get where they, where they need to go. When we talk about complete streets, complete streets aren't just for bikers. And, and you know, that's a misconception that a lot of what we do is for the cycling community. Realistically, those cyclists that you see out there today, the, the spandex clad cyclists that are you know, flying down the road, those are not who we're designing these facilities for. We're designing for these facilities for the people that want to ride. They own a bike, but they don't feel safe. They don't feel comfortable to get out. We're designing it for eight to age 80 so that kids and parents can feel safe riding in these lanes and riding and commuting, getting to school, traveling, making their commute, or just the short trips. Get where they need to go as safely and as, as, as soundly as they can. So this is all in the modes and all types of people that we're trying to protect for because the real reality is that this supports public health. That's why we have the Department of Health here. Um, 
HIFI is here, the Hawaii Public Health Institute. You know, they acknowledge the fact that when we are more active, that these allow us to take those steps and be a healthier society. Transportation equity, the reality is not everyone can afford to own cars. The transportation costs, especially working in a downtown area when parking can be as much as $350 a month, not everyone can afford that on all salaries that work in our downtown and even in our Waikiki areas. And really it's just that safety and accessibility for all modes. When we talk about the drive and the need for complete streets, this is multiple partners, and many of them are out there in our courtyard. I hope you get to talk with them. But this is not just a city initiative. This is not just the mayor's vision. This is something that started a long time ago, and many people here who have been part of this process for decades, you know, these are the same groups and the same people that are pushing the city to take these steps. They acknowledge that for too long we've contained and conti continued to design and maintain our streets for the fastest flow of vehicles. That's not safe for vehicles, that's not safe for pedestrians, it's not safe for anyone. So we need to take a step back and understand who we're actually doing this for. And when we have our partners like Hawaii Bicycling League and Bike Share, who's a nonprofit, and even the neighborhood board, when they come out and they're demanding these changes, we know that that's that groundswell, and that's the community demanding these changes and, and need for transforming. The mayor alluded to the bike network that he intends to build out over the next four years, and, and myself with the, with the directors here committed to making these improvements. And we really see the opportunity for building this robust bike network. After the symposium and speakers, dozens of community groups hosted tables and exhibits in the Laniakea Courtyard. The biking community was there in force, spreading the good news about the bike share program, which is being rolled out in June. Hello and welcome back. We're here at the Downtown Chinatown Complete Streets Public Information event being held by the city. Let's go ahead and check out some of the awesome booths and speak to some of the participants of this evening's event. So we are here with Mike Packard, Complete Streets Administrator with the city at what is the um, a really a big culminating event of a series of events that the city has had on the Downtown Chinatown Complete the Streets initiative. So hello, um, hello Mike. Thank you. It's great to see you again. So you gave what I thought was just a really comprehensive um, and interesting presentation to folks about what Complete the Streets will mean for downtown Chinatown. Um, can you speak to us a little bit, give us a few of the highlights of, of what you think this is going to accomplish? Realistically, this, this project and this, this meeting here today was to, you know, reinforce the, the three months of public feedback we've gotten about the project, talking about pedestrian and bicycle safety. So the changes that are coming and, and what we're looking to do to respond and, and react to that. Um, I think that's fantastic. So when, what is the timeline for some of these changes happening? So uh, this part was the community outreach and, and feedback, and, and we were really hearing what people had to say at the same time. We were doing the analysis to, to make sure that we could make this work. You know after this process, after we've come to the conclusion, we will go into design and we'll take that throughout and before we get to construction, looking in the realm of 2018, 2020, when you'll see these changes in our roads. Are there still opportunities for community folks to provide input? Absolutely. This is really the, that, that part of which we are looking to get that feedback and you can go to honolulu.gov slash complete streets and and reach out and give us that however in the near future we are going to be taking all that information and moving towards the design so that we can actually move this into construction sooner than later what are some of the benefits that folks who live work and visit downtown are going to experience from this initiative it's really going to be create a more livable, equitable downtown. It's going to reflect downtowns and, and cities that we see throughout the country and throughout the world. And in a beautiful place like Honolulu, not having that ability to travel where you need to go safely just is, is a need and a desire for all. So when we activate our streets, the economic benefits and just the enjoyment that people can get out of these improved facilities, you know, we really see that as the end goal of this project. Representative Lee, why don't you go ahead and tell us about your involvement in this event and why you think it's a positive thing for the city? Well, you know, on the state side, we really want to be supportive of what the city is trying to do because ultimately when you talk about our next generation growing up here in Hawaii it is about lowering that cost of living and providing people places to get around and ways to do it that don't require them to have to spend money on a car on insurance on everything else um, 
especially if they're in the downtown area where they can walk to work or bike to work. That is something that is a win-win for everyone. And the bigger thing is that ultimately, those people will be able to get around safer. You'll save lives, and that's the bottom line. I would have to agree with that. I myself don't have a car, and it can be a challenge sometimes getting around. Um, what are some things that are happening on the state level to help make getting around easier for folks? Well, you know, one of the things that we've been doing is actually working in partnership with the city and county, as well as the other counties, to provide funding to upgrade state highways and intersections where you have state and county um, infrastructure come together. I mean, it's going to take both working together because at the end of the day, people don't think about we're driving on a county road, now we're driving on a state road. They just want to drive, and they just want to bike, and they just want to walk to get around. And it's our job to work together to make that possible. What are some things that folks can do if they want to help you make this happen? You know what? Reach out to your elected officials. Explain to people why it's important that we have these better facilities for everyone. That's the bottom line. People are going to going to get what they ask for. And this is something I think people really want. So if they just step up and ask, we'll all be better for it. Well, thank you so much, Representative Lee, for talking with us this evening. Thanks very much. Aloha. I'm Melissa White with SSFM International and um, consultant helping the city out on this effort. All right, fantastic. So Melissa has been spearheading a lot of this work designed to reach out and get their impactful commentary from the community on um, how to do this project. So Melissa, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about this outreach effort? Well, it may be unprecedented in city history to try to do this much outreach in a three-month period. Um, it, I think it's almost unprecedented in my experience. Um, over the last three months, we've done about two dozen community events, ranging from pop-ups to um, lunch and learn events. And then this is the grand finale community meeting. And as you can see, there's just dozens of people involved from the Complete Streets partners to the various city departments. And we had every single... Um, well, we had four major city directors here, as well as the mayor and um, several legislators. So we're really thrilled to see the level of support. Um, and honestly, the, the public process has been very positive so far. Um, people really uh, get that streets need to be safer, they, that they need to accommodate everybody, and they want to be part of um, making that happen to make Honolulu a better place for everybody. Well, congratulations on the event being um, so well attended. What would you say are the top three um, feedback items that you've, you've heard from the public during this process? We've definitely heard that the pedestrian environment in Honolulu needs a lot of work and that, you know, it's not safe. The data shows that we are among the highest pedestrian fatalities for elderly people. And, um, you know, people are very aware of that, and they're aware of the dangers as they're getting around. So, And people have a lot of specific input. They tell us this particular crossing is an issue, you know, this street light is an issue, and they just feel like, in general, pedestrians need to be better accommodated and have more priority. We shouldn't have to press buttons to cross the street, you know. Is there any one particular corner that um, either the, the public and or the public and um, you guys in your work have identified as really being one that needs to be addressed? Well, there are two that come to mind. One is Nu'uanu and Pauahi, um, and that corner is proposed to have sidewalk extensions, which will help improve the visibility of pedestrians and which will just give more sidewalk space. Um, so it will be a good safety improvement. It will slow cars down as well because it will narrow the space a little bit. Um, and then Bishop and Queen Street. So we've heard there that the crossings aren't well marked, that there's cars that turn and they're not always looking for pedestrians, um, and that location is proposed for protected intersection. So that's only one of about half a dozen that are in the U.S. right now. So. Sure, I'm Harrison Rue. I'm the Community Building and Transit Oriented Development Administrator for the city. That's, we, we were responsible for the improvements around the future rail stations. Well, you sound like a great person to talk to for an eagle-eye view on this event. What do you think that this initiative will mean to the downtown Chinatown area? Well, as, as Mike said when he was doing the introduction, there, people have been making plans for years for these kind of improvements. In our TOD plans, we've got a network of road improvements and intersection improvements and bike lanes and things like that. Um, we had a, a Chinatown Action Summit last year, and people are saying the same kind of priorities. We want to make it safer to walk around. We want to make it possible to bike. Um, you know, the new... Uh, bike lane, a particular bike lane on King Street, that's terrific, but you can't get anywhere else. So we've got to build the, the connections from there to the future rail stations. 
and you know, it's complicated contractually, but we finally figured that out. So the team has really got several of these that are going to be put in while they're repaving. It's not the only thing. We're, there's other things we're, we're funding uh, on, on stuff that is already already fixed. But um, So in a way, it's once, you know, um, it'll just be sort of one more, you know, set of experience and learnings that will help power this type of um, type of project throughout the city. Yeah, we've got a great new Complete Streets uh, guide, guide design manual for all the new streets. It's harder to go in and fix the old ones. And since a lot of the rail stations are older neighborhoods that have been kind of waiting for investment, we're doing the same kind of planning in, in Kalihi, at Kapalama area. We're doing the stuff out in Waipahu. Actually, we've got an action plan meeting next week where we're doing similar improvements out in Waipahu as well. So it has been a great evening at the downtown Chinatown Complete Streets Public Information event. There have been, it's been, I think, a successful evening, great presentation, well attended, um, great set of vendors. We've had great representation from our uh, public officials. We spoke to Chris Lee um, and other officials here. Mayor Caldwell gave an address. Um, and this really, I think, was a fantastic finale for what has been a three-month outreach event to try and make downtown Chinatown more walkable, more livable, more equitable. And hopefully we're going to see this happen in other areas of the city as well. If there's anything more that uh, you're interested in learning about this, you can go to www.honolulu.gov slash complete street. Thank you so much. Signing off for ThinkTech. Watch what happens. It's not only the gathering of public input and the designing of better and safer streets and public spaces in Honolulu. It's the actual implementation of those plans, which of course takes money. It's up to us not only to participate in the conversation, but to make sure it happens. This could be great, so let's all stay tuned. Want to know more about biking in Honolulu? Want to know more about the Complete Streets program? Want to know more about the Bike Share program? Check out these links. Yes, let's all be optimistic about the future of getting around in our city. And now, let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. There's so much happening in Hawaii. Sometimes things happen under the radar and we don't hear much about them. But ThinkTech will take you there. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week to stay current on what's happening in government, industry, academia, and communities around the islands and the world. ThinkTech broadcasts its daily talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show, or if you want to replay or share our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. The audio is on thinktechhawaii.com slash radio, and we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. See our website for links. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links, or sign up on our email list and get the daily docket of our upcoming shows. ThinkTech has a high-tech, green screen, First Amendment studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to join our live audience or participate in our shows, write to think at thinktechhawaii.com. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube, or send us a tweet at thinktechhi. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives together in these islands. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together.
call in to our shows live. While you're watching any of our shows, you can call in to 415-871-2474 and pose a question or make a comment. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of ThinkTech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Okay, Elise, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Elise does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks for being part of our Think Tech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Raya Salter. And I'm Elise Anderson. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.